Okay, my friends, if this wasn't so tragic, it would be literally hilarious. <laughs> this is Hubble's Law. Wait till you hear what this is based on, and what they actually know, and what they still rely on, is Hubble's distances to different galaxies and so forth. It has nothing to do with the distances. They're nice pictures, but they have nothing to do with the distances. All right, sound is nothing more than the same particle that light is, only it's moving a lot slower, that's all. If it's stationary, it's just sitting there with the fields around it. Now, if you start to move it, it the field goes with it, It's because it's, it's a magnetic field. If you move it real fast, it leads the field with a wave following it. If you move it faster than the speed of sound is supposed to go, you get the same particles we had. Sound is nothing more than light, only it's slow. Okay, this is sound, but it's light. It's exactly identical. Sound would be these little white particles just sitting around doing nothing because they're not moving or anything. But this one here is making them show up because it's forcing them and it's accelerating. Now, this is sound going sort of fast. It's picking up. The particle is in the front dragging the wave with it. Now, all of a sudden, the sound is accelerating up to and exceeding the speed of sound, in this case, the speed of light, which so Einstein was wrong about all that. Now, here, you have that point particle, and exactly what the sound did, identical sound, and its sound starts out with the same particle, just like this. It's the same thing. That's it. And sound can bounce off of something and push things over. They go, Bleh! and it pushes a house of cards over and stuff. Because this has weight. Same as light. Light does the same thing. It has weight. All right, just to keep you on the trail, Fermilab, Don Lincoln, the fixed particle never changes, point particle gets big and small. There they are. The glowy little edge around it, identical. Not close, identical. Not close, identical. Now, and I agree, the white one glows and gets big and small, and it also actually squirts through a venturi to create fission and then fusion. Exactly what Fermilab has asked for, we created and did. And this is the actual acceleration of the particle. This right here is what Fermilab wants to see and calls a muon neutrino and an electron neutrino. Whoops. So that, and then it creates Cherenkov radiation where they split, the black and the white split, and you get this shower, and the black one goes on its way. We did this, and that is the holy grail of energy. Now, additional to that, what I was just talking about before, speeding up and slowing down of light, very simple, and that's what's happening in space. There's no red shift because of their, everything's running away from us. That is total, literal insanity. I can show you this blue one right here speeding up and slowing down. So it came in hot. All right, so that's speeding up, slowing down. This one here, the red one, is just rocket ship speeding up. And then it concussed here and did the division. That's the real critical thing. And then, of course, we have Higgs fields. We could do this all day long. They do this just by accident at, at CERN and Fermilab. I am not kidding you. It's, a, it's just a total accident for them. And then they look at a pile of trash. We're looking at light. That is actual pulsed red laser. And these little dots are gases that are in the air that have electrons attached to them. When they get forced out of the way, they push these particles, these shove back, these glow, this glows like hell. And because we put it through the Venturi, it took off like a Z rocket ship. So we know we can accelerate them, we know we can slow them down. All right. There's no, no mystery here now. We know about the green and the red and the blue. They're all the same particle. That's the red one. We have green ones. They're the same ones. All right, you see them coming through here. Zoom! And there, there they are right there. That's a photon. It's two electrons. And an electron really consists of right here. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to keep saying it until somebody pays attention. And I get some of our government agencies to pay attention. Maybe we get some free energy. That's what they say. You get 207 times more energy if you can split them. We split them. No question whatsoever. That's the two particles back to back. 
all right, a black and a white. Now, green just means it's spinning faster than the red. He said, oh, Roger, can you prove that? Damn sure right I can. You prove every single word I say. And not having it be allowed to be seen pisses me off to no end. Hold on a second. All right, that's our Venturi. It's a, you can also call it a field crusher. And all it does is it crushes the fields together, and when they do, they explode. Now, there's the green and the red at the same time through the same Venturi. That would have been the trajectory of the red. This is the trajectory of the green. Well, look way out here. The green reconcusses because it's been interfered with by the red creating interference basically in the way of the green so the green has to concuss and it does and pushes the red down instead of the red going here it's being pushed down this isn't another stream this is that stream but because of the interference to it some of the red squeaks through but most of it gets pushed down and it actually creates these sideways vortices they are not supposed to be sideways sideways is unnatural they spin this way because of the field effect to the earth. That's why the black and white particles spin along that pathway. This is a tumble. Very, it's just unknown, basically. I think this is probably the first time it's ever been seen. See, this is the way they're supposed to work like this because the polarity of the earth is down. They're not supposed to tumble around this way. They're supposed to spin this way. And this is the red spinning. You see the white is in the back and white now is in the front. That's all one picture of the same particle. And it's all colliding over there, dividing. It's so fast that you, you pick up a whole slew of them at once. Just like that blue one I showed you. You see that? That's the blue. It's coming in hot as hell here, right after the Venturi. And then it starts to concuss with just the nature of atmosphere. And it starts to slow down. And you see them starting to wide open the spaces. And then all of a sudden you can see the two particles just barely. If he had gone further, further out, we'd have been able to see that it is constructed of two particles, a black and a, you know, the two blacks and the two whites. But we can see basically the two whites starting to appear. Blue is hot, real hot, compared to the red and the green. You see down here, you can't see it, just a little blur. And this is it. That's the spin. That's what happens to them. Right, you can come back and watch this and read what it says again if you'd like. But what we divided the muon and the electron neutrino, which were normally together as a single particle. Now, two of them together make a photon. But as an electron, it's just this together. If you had two of these side by side, one upside down, back to the other, it's two bar magnets. That's all they are, is little bits of bar magnets, and they have a weight. They weigh an atomic mass unit weight, I believe, about 0 .000585 atomic mass units. If you divide one by 1839, that's what these, this should weigh. And all the weight appears to be the black. The black is, a, is, is the fixed particle, exactly what Don Lincoln said. The other one is um, a neutrino shower that is... Um, I can see it's doing something. It burns like hell. You can see it in an atomic bomb blast. The first thing that hits is the white. It just vaporizes the house. And then the second layer, boom, the house goes flying. Because that's when this one comes. They can be separated, as you can see. We did. So I'm saying right here, we should be able to use that Bernie stuff right here. Or somehow use the black stuff. There's energy here. There's a hell of a lot of energy. 207 times the original value, they say. Those are the words of top physicists, not me. But if you can get a muon away from the electron neutrino, that's when you increase its energetic value. And you can see it. I mean, anybody can see that. Okay. Again, we accelerated the light. It's not supposed to happen. We saw the particles. We saw they were black and white. We saw they divided. We saw they came back together. This is supposedly, this increase in value is 207 times. And I can see there's a hell of a gigantic explosion going on here from this tiny little particle. Now, if we can use that, and through uh, what they call now the perovskites, they're thin metal films on, on a very thin substrate that you just hit it and it sucks all the electrons down because they have all kinds of electron absorption capabilities. They're 
primarily in a transition metal range. I've got to, primarily they're in this range here. Of, of, but they're very, very thin films. You don't need a whole ton of them. And, and they just force the electrons in. So if we can collect them right here, I think we get free energy. But we need 30 days, 60 days tops. All of this stuff exists. I've shown it. It's done. It's already done. We just need to be able to absorb it here and see, does that exceed the input? And Cornell put something out, the 2P2H. This was nine years ago as well. All this stuff goes back nine years ago, exactly when we were doing the same research. And, and then they just dropped it. I never dropped it, but they never picked it up. Here it is right there. Neutrinos, which we're talking about, in the nucleus, quasi they can crush and do this, of these 2P2H interactions, up to 10 billion electron volts with those two little tiny particles. And then they say, yes, it appears that they can produce excess energy. And, and then they just dropped it. This is Cornell. And this goes back 2013. There it is right there, 2014, right in that area. Same with us. And they did the same thing with the smartphones. They were able to use smartphones as what we use to, to watch these events happen. He used the actual selfie side of the smartphone right up close and personal in a dark place. And that was, all I picked up was the radiation. And there it was. Same thing they did with the smartphones. All right, this just came out. Physicists discover elusive new particle with a tabletop experiment. Same thing we did. But I don't know what they did. I'm not going to claim anything, but they're talking about an axial Higgs. That just means that spinning particle that I showed you. The Higgs bosons are those circular patterns. I have a whole ton of those pictures. Well, here they are right here. And you hear the axe coming out at us. And this one here is being pinched. You see that? They're supposed to be sort of flat with a tip on them. And, and the particle is spinning so fast that as it hits into the other particles that are, everything has uh, electrons in it, it starts to create this circular field. This one was pinched sideways and it elongated and then it came back to the red. It's only supposed to be the red. This one really blew my mind. There's been some other stuff that blew my mind too. There's one, well, I might as well show you. All right, you see this? This is that Higgs and, and this is as it's coming at us. That little particle there, right there, it doesn't seem like much, but I'm going to show you something. Remember this blue particle being squished. I have another shot of this coming at us. It's the same picture. And that particle is a particle. When we get right down to it, I'm going to show you. It's very interesting. Now, don't forget, I've been doing this for many, many years. So, I didn't pick this up overnight. Again, there's that blue one being pinched. And that's something that's very strange, that it can pinch and accelerate itself. So this is another Venturi, basically. It's pinching its fields and creating additional energy here. Very, very strange. Now, that's that particle. That little tiny one I showed you. You can go back and look at it again. This one right here. Now, why isn't it a field like that? Why is that little white spot there? These are the little sizzles that come out of here. You see that little white sizzle there? That is when it's raw energy. All of these are raw energy. And now all of a sudden they hit at a certain distance from the Venturi. Pow! They whack right into all of the electrons that are in space. And I've shown that a bazillion times too. Because here it is right here. Boom. Coming in, we have the particle. And it's a four little four particles until it splits right here. The black can't get through, so they end up being a hammer. They come bam, 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 because this is a, a pulse laser. Bam, bam, bam. So the black ones end up being the squirters. And this little tiny slit lets the white ones squirt through, that's all. So it's, we're using the, the black ones against the white ones here. Because the black ones can't get through. They're going to pile up on there, as they do, and then they end up pushing around. But this is the concussion area where they come back together. This is the fusion. This is the area I just showed you where the Higgs fields appear. These are Higgs, and they start to make these Higgs fields show up. Now, what happened to that little white particle? Let's check that out. Now, I'd like to have somebody explain this to me. 
that appears to be that little white particle. And I believe it must be spinning backwards, gathering the field instead of smashing things out away from it. It's pulling things into it. Because there's a right-hand rule, and I believe that's going left-hand. However, it appears to have concussed with this field, which is a normal right-hand field, and straightened itself out and is giving off a little tiny bit of something there. But that is extreme. Anytime you see a, a, a good white glow, you know that you have energy there. And that glow is a very strange glow because it gets real energetic here, and then all of a sudden it it changes to, to where I haven't seen one with a glowy red thing around a white inner core, to be honest with you, that I can remember that looks like that. But, I don't know what it is.